Hello and welcome, <laughs> the lovely Maria from Mama Diaries. Is it Mama Diaries on yeah. TikTok? I meant to say, uh, ask yeah. you that. Aye, right, that's fine. I do follow you on TikTok as well, <laughs> it's just that I see you on Instagram. I've actually known Maria, we were just saying this, uh, a good couple of years anyway. Three, from Amelia maybe was two born, or three years. just after, uh huh. Uh, wasn't it? Aye. Just because when I started my Instagram, straight after that, really. So now you've went a bit huge. <laughs> On social media, and not that I would never heard you before now, because as you know, I've never had everybody. Um, because you've moved house and mm. that, but actually, because I've known you for so long, I know so much about <laughs> you, and I know. I think it wasn't that long after Amelia was born because you were talking about the postnatal depression, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the first thing I want to talk about because you're quite open about yep. that. But there is just so much because you've had a boob job reduction. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You have had a business that you had to basically pack up because yep. it just wasn't. Was it because it wasn't profitable enough? No, they just ruined me. Oh, quite right. brutally, okay. I. Like <laughs> the parents. Oh, dance moms. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> oh well, we can talk about that then. <laughs> um, right. Um, so there's loads of stuff, loads, loads and you've just moved and moved in uh, to a brand new bought property that you've done up and blah 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 right but we're gonna start with right, the postnatal okay. depression because you had Amelia right so what happened um I don't even know how you start it like <laughs> so I had Amelia in lockdown I think that in general is like a it's a bit gotten into it anyway I didn't get mm. Blaine didn't get to come to any like um, appointments. appointments or anything mm -hmm. like that but I don't kind of put that down to it because that was the time we were in like I, I didn't know any different if you know what I mean so see if I was to have a baby now and blame was at an appointment with me I'd be a bit like oh, I'm not used to this kind of thing uh, do you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I just didn't have a good pregnancy at all all my life I only ever wanted to be a mum right so I had in my head like having a baby was this big like amazing, uh, you're glowing. You see, like, you see all the first timers uh -huh. on social media and being glowing like that. and they look beautiful. And I, I looked like a tatty. Uh -huh. I looked <laughs> like a tatty on legs. I looked mm -hmm. like a spud. I was, I was horrible. I hated being pregnant. I hated so did that. I. So did hated that. It. We've spoken about this. Uh, you I remember? Hated it. I hated it. Mm -hmm. I was so unwell from the get go, and I uh, couldn't did you walk. Not have Hypothalamus, gravidarum? No. Did you not have the sickness? Know. That's the constant sickness. No, no I was constantly feeling sick. I never threw up once, right. but I was just feeling sick for a good six months. Mm -hmm. um, and if Blaine had said to me one more time, do you want a ginger biscuit? Like, it was going to be World War Three in that house. It was horrendous. Because they don't work. No, they don't. People Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. They don't work. So, I, know so people are I was so them. unwell and I couldn't walk. See, obviously being a dancer and stuff, like my joints were already like... The doctor explained it, but I don't understand it all. Uh, but I was in crutches for like the last three months, I think, maybe. Um, and then I had Amelia and it was fine. I had an emergency C-section, but again, I was just like, oh, these kind of things happen. But after I had Amelia, I was really poorly. Um, I was like having infection after infection after infection. Like I couldn't even hold Amelia properly at the start. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do the usual mumsy things where I was like changing her bum and lifting her and like cuddle her at night and that I could lie in the bed and I could cuddle her but I couldn't do like mumsy things and I remember like it must have not I'd been a few days after right and I'm a very person like I want to get up and go I want mm -hmm. to keep going right I fell out with my mum and Blaine because they wouldn't let me drive a car a few days after having an emergency c-section like a wild right so um but you're not allowed to drive for I know, six weeks oh, right, I know okay. I know but mm -hmm. I'm just that person right so I was, I remember crying to my mum and Blaine and be like, I'm never going to have a bond with my baby because it's you and my mum that's doing everything. Like, I, was, I fell out with them over it. I was so mm. hormonal, right? Um, so I, that kind of was a, a massive part to play in it, I think, um, how unwell I was. And At what point did you realise or where you actually... I had postnatal depression. I... Um, I think I knew secret. I've always had anxiety and depression, right? Um, it's something like goes way back but I think I remember so significantly um, Amelia you know how like your midwife check up like she must have been about it was at Christmas time so she would have been October November three months old right mm -hmm. and it's the one where they come and they check for postnatal depression Aye, they, they do the, the test, questionnaire right the test that's a questionnaire is it no it is yeah, I yeah, know yeah, it is but right. I had in my head it was a test mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. I was I remember having this thought in my head that if I if my midwife knew that I was really struggling the way I was inside, that she was going to pick my baby up at the Moses basket and take her away from me, mm. that's mental. Right. One of my best friends has just had 
a baby and see if she'd said that to me I'd be like shut up stop being so stupid like that's not going to happen but in my brain that was what was going to happen so I lied through my teeth through mm. that test I've heard loads of people saying lied that through my that teeth test. and I just wish like now looking back I wish I'd just turned around and said I'm really struggling like I just need a wee bit of support Lena. I didn't even say it to my mum didn't say it to my sister or nothing um, but I do wish I'd just said I need a bit of help mm -hmm. um, looking back now if I, mm -hmm. if I was to go through it again, if I was lucky enough to fall pregnant again, I would. Aye. And we'll talk about that because you've just said to me, I knew you'd had one miscarriage because I saw Aye. you sharing that, but I didn't know that there was two, but we can talk about Aye. that. But see, so what what was the point then where did something happen where you thought... So obviously me and Blaine broke up and I think that being like new parents is such a like I always say like I check in on my friends that have just had a baby because it's such a pressure into it like it's such a massive mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. and I think that's obviously what happened with me and Blaine and we're absolutely fine now but how long how old was Amelia when uh, that happened uh, three months so she was tiny oh my god so the postnatal depression diagnosis then did that is, did this all happen at the same time I, no well I didn't actually I still kept it quiet through all of that, it didn't come out fully until Amelia was maybe just turning one. I kept it to myself. And I, because I had this thing in my head that I couldn't burden them do with it. Like, it was my issue and I had to deal with it. But I always say to people now, like, that, I think that's why I'm so open about talking about it because. I just wish I had somebody that would have been open about it at the time to say it's fine to feel like that. Do you think it was something that came between your relationship then? Not that I'm what? like, I'm no... The postnatal depression Aye. part? No, I think I was struggling. I was struggling before that, but I just never clicked on it. And then obviously the pressure and everything, having a baby and all of that. But I think the the point that made me... I had a, a mental breakdown when Amelia was maybe about one, turning one. Um but I wish I'd just said to somebody, I need help. That, mm. Like, it's really, I, really, I get emotional thing. I can't look at baby pictures of Amelia. I, am, I know a lot of mums that I have postnatal depression even that if are I, like that. Like, I've got mm -hmm. photos on my phone and videos, I physically cannot look at them because it, it takes just you right triggers me straight away. And it just sets me right off. And it's so, so sad. Like, I, I have photo albums. I'm that person that uh, prints all your photos out. Like I have mm -hmm. photo albums. I've got oh, photo, uh -huh, like real you? photo albums. Blame was cracking up when we were moving last week. He's like, is there any need for this hundred <laughs> photo albums? I'm like, Aye. yeah, and I'll continue. But oh, I, I, can't, I physically cannot look at the the pictures. Aye. Yeah, that is quite a common thing. Aye. So, so did you ask for help? What, Eventually. So point? it was fine. I kept, I kept like. I, was, I got really good at masking it. I got really good at hiding that I was struggling. And then, obviously, me and Blamer broke up, and that's already, like, a like a pressure on you or whatever. Massive. It's uh -huh, huge. Like, uh -huh. like it's huge. But I just kind of kept going, kept pushing. And then it got... See how... I th this is what I always say to everyone. Do you remember? Like, see when you have a baby, <coughs> and everyone always says to you, you get that massive rush of, like, love and uh -huh. all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember, and I, I get pure emotional talking about this, so if I cry, don't judge me, right? But I remember when just after the midwife had left and I was lying I was sitting I was holding Amelia and I knew I loved that baby with every inch of my body like mm -hmm. Amelia is mm -hmm. my world and anybody that knows me knows that I live and breathe that baby mm -hmm. but I remember just holding her and looking at her and thinking I feel numb I don't feel anything towards you I love you so so much with all my heart but I don't feel anything inside like I just felt numb and I couldn't explain it to anybody I didn't want to explain it to anybody because I felt like if I spoke about that they're going to be like oh my god that mo doesn't love her Wayne like and I did mm -hmm. I do obviously love my Wayne but I felt like, why did I not feel that big, sudden uh, gust of love that everybody talks about? Do, do you know what I'm talking about? I know about? exactly what you mean. Because I just did I was never <coughs> diagnosed with postnatal depression. Yeah, well, I do think that I had it. Um, you know, most people, I think, do get it to Definitely. whatever a wee bit degree, of blues, right? Aye. But that, I remember, so people talk, I hear people talking about that gushy the love, gushy right? Love. I didn't feel that either. I felt a massive like overwhelming feeling of protection mm -hmm. like there was mm -hmm. no way anybody was going to hurt my baby or, or, me, or, have I... her or whatever but the instant feeling i had when i held her apart from the like protecting her was panic yep like how the uh -huh. fuck 
What am I meant to do? Got to be responsible. How am I going to look after this baby? I'm myself. <laughs> exactly. No, I was just absolute panic. But all I wanted all my life was to be a mum. Like, see, before Amelia, I wanted a football team. Mm-hmm. I used to prepare my mum for I was sixteen. I'm like, you're going to be a, a granny soon. Like, I wanted to be a young mum. That's all right. I wanted in my life. And my my friends always laugh about it because they always expect me to fall pregnant at like eighteen because mm-hmm. all I ever wanted to be was a mum. Mm-hmm. And now since Amelia, I'm like. I, Children terrified me. Pregnancy terrified me. <laughs> Having more children terrifies I me. I, I mean, I did it once and was like, "Fuck that! I am not doing that again." Um, I mean, it did take us four years to have her, but even still, after I'd had her that and you. after that first year, absolutely. And it's no the way. when you have another one. When you have uh, another one, that that rails me. I know, and that especially when you've had suffered mm-hmm. baby loss, I think that would make that uh, twenty yeah. million times yeah. worse. So. Was there a point, I can't remember where we got to, was there a point where you were tipped over the yeah. edge and went for help? So, it was, this is when I might get, I might cry a wee bit, but it got, I think Amelia was maybe, she'd either just turned one or she was just after turning one or before turning one and I just remember it kept building up. I felt like a kettle, like it was building up and building up in me and I hadn't spoke to my mum and I hadn't spoke to my sister and my mum and my sister are like my best friends, right. like I'm so close mm-hmm. to them. Um and i remember just one day sitting in the house and i just i didn't want to be here anymore mary and i remember this actually makes me feel sick when i think about this like i used to go to bed every night and be like i just don't want to wake up and Mila would be so much better without me and that's so sad when i think about that like so i remember one day it just got to head and i picked Amelia up put her in my car put my wee dog in the car and i drove to my mum's and i put them in my mum's and i left i didn't say anything to md and i just left and i I didn't know what I was doing, but I didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't have a plan. I didn't know where I was going. I was sobbing, Mary, and I was terrified. I was terrified in my own brain. I was terrified in my thoughts, and I drove back to my house, and I remember I got into my house, and I just dropped to the floor, sobbing my heart out, and I was like, what the hell am I doing? Like, and I remember sitting on the stairs, and I was sobbing, Mary, and I was like, Amelia would be so much better without me. Like, she doesn't need me. She's got her nana. Like, she's she's surrounded by family that love her. Um, and then I was sitting on the stairs and I was like, nah, Maria, stop this right now. Do not be so stupid. Put myself in the car. I drove to my mum's at God knows what speed, right? Got in my mum's door and I literally just fell in my mum's arms. And I don't really remember it. And after that, all I really remember is my mum put me in her bed and just holding me and me sobbing and sobbing and sobbing saying please help me somebody please help me and then from there my mum just begged me to get therapy my mum's been begging me to get therapy if i was about 21 oh, really? genuinely. oh aye my mum's been begging me to get therapy for years and at that point i was like somebody needs to get me help and i went to therapy and it changed my life mary honestly changed my life but I, there's a point in it that i remember like lying in my mum's bed and I was sobbing my heart out and my brother and my sister had Amelia downstairs and I remember Bethany, my sister, oh, my, she came into the room and I just looked up at my sister and she was, tears were streaming her face, seeing her sister like that and I remember thinking to myself, I can't have my sister or my daughter, I've got a brother as well by the way, but I, mm-hmm. I can't have them say mental health took my sister or my mum, I'm, I'm not letting that happen so I ended up staying at my mum's for about a week I think um, and I, I got help and from therapy my life just went straight so much better do you still go here uh i probably should <laughs> but i no, don't, you don't. Like, no i probably you don't need should to go. sometimes you don't need to go, you don't need to go. um i'm much better at coping with things now um what was always. it what therapy was it how it did was you get in it? um oh i never remember the name of where it is it's called clydesdale counseling that I'm, the guy's amazing honestly amazing he changed my life the way i think mm-hmm. about life and how long did you go and was it every week uh i went for about six months every week and then i kind of fell off it because i felt fine then the miscarriages happened and i went back but i didn't go back long enough i should have went back for longer but i know that he's always there i know coping strategies now to help me with things mm-hmm. and i talk so much more like see before like i feel like everyone on social media thinks i talk about this so openly because i talk about it on my social media Mm -hmm. but in real life i don't talk about things and it drives my mum crazy because i don't talk about it i don't talk about it i don't talk about it and then it explodes Mm -hmm. but you share it you share the life of it the stuff so what at what point then did 
as you said about miscarriages, I don't really want to pry into your no, personal life too much, right? But Blaine left and he's back. He's and back. I'm trying to establish what happened. Um, yeah, like so. Did you? So did we were broke up for a year. Aye, so, uh, uh, so we broke up for a year, and then we just ended up getting back together. Right. Mm -hmm. And saw the way in anyway, aye, so you were still aye. in contact. So we were fine. Um, the relationship broke down, but you, you, you but I think a it. massive part of that is being new parents. My postnatal depression probably what didn't age help. Where were you? When you uh, had twenty five and I had a million. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I. There was just so much pressure, I think, having it just got to us and we didn't know how to cope with it. And see, when I think back to how me and Blaine were then, I'm like, oh my God, we're totally different people. We needed mm -hmm. to break up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I stand by that 100%. Because mm -hmm. we're totally, like, even all my friends and that will say it now, we're totally different people. Mm -hmm. Totally different people. So how did you get back together? What Accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was an accident. <laughs> Right, and that was it. You just got <laughs> yeah, back together. Back. <laughs> right, so then you've moved into your new house. Did he move back in? Uh -huh, to where into you... the old one. So he, you were still in the same house anyway, mm -hmm. and he moved back in. Yeah. And then you've moved into your new house. We just now. bought a house together. And how? So what, were you in the old house, the back together for about two a, years? A year. A year. Aye. And then the uh -huh. new and house. Then we'll which just we'll, bought the house we'll there. So the miscarriages then as well. So we had a miscarriage last year, and I didn't. I didn't process it at all. It just happened and I moved on. I pretended it didn't happen. Like, I see when I think back and I'm like, how did I do that? Like, I think I was in very much fight or flight mode where I was like, I try to protect Blaine, try to protect Amelia and just get up and go with it. The second miscarriage was totally different. I was broken, Mary. Like, I see, that's, I, what, that's what I seen. That's I when was, I seen no, it I was on social broken. media. I was horrendous. I couldn't leave my bed for about a week. If it wasn't for my mum, I don't know what me and my Blaine would have done because my mum was in my house day and night. Blame was obviously had to still go to work, but it was just so much different mentally, physically, like emotionally. It was it was so much worse the first time. I just pretended it didn't happen. Was there a difference on like the number of weeks it happened? No, it was exactly. Like, exactly um, I think the first one was about six weeks. The second one was about nine weeks. So there wasn't no much difference. But right. um, the second one, I think the first one we were a bit like, oh my god, we're pregnant. Like, whoops kind of thing uh -huh. and then the second one was we were actually quite excited and we were talking about it properly and all of that kind of thing mm -hmm. was it just um, the summer mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just right. in the summer there it was when i went to do the north coast 500 when i was doing the camp say mm -hmm. camp sort of thing um so i that happened and then i was really what did really, happen so mm -hmm. i was can you talk about ah, it no happened? absolutely so i just remember when i was pregnant at the time i just had a gut feeling I was like, this baby's not going to stick. But I kind of kept telling myself it was because I'd had a miscarriage. So when I was saying it to Blaine, I was like, I just, I'm so scared. And he's like, don't be stupid. Like, these things happen. It's going, everyone's going to be fine. And I'm like, right, okay. But in my head, I'm like, something's not right. I just don't feel right. Something's not right. So we went to do that campsy campsers thing. That was fine. I mean, I ended up with chicken pox. And she was really poorly. So obviously a pregnant person can't be around chicken pox. But I remember we were there and I'd went for a pee and I'd wiped. And there was a bit of like... You know what I mean? And um, I came back and I was sobbing to Blaine. And the first thing we always do is phone my mum. It happens first. We, when we fell pregnant with Amelia, right? Amelia was planned, right? First thing we done was seen the test. I burst into tears. I'm like, oh my God, eh? We both got in the car and just went straight to mum's in silence. <laughs> she opened the door and I burst into tears. And she's like, he's all right, what's happening? And we told her, she's like, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we done when that happened was phone my mum. Mum's like, listen, don't panic. It's absolutely fine. I had a bleed with Amelia when I, mm -hmm. when I was pregnant with Amelia. She's like, it happened to Amelia, don't panic. It's fine, just come home. So we came home and it just got progressively worse. And then um, we phoned the hospital. Oh, Amelia ended up in the hospital with a chicken pox. She was really poorly. And they gave me a test in the hospital and it came back. I was still positive, but that's obviously going to happen, isn't it? Um, so they says, look, you're fine, we're not worried about you. Sent me home and it just kept getting worse and worse. But they actually couldn't see me. So this what happened on like the Friday. I couldn't be seen until like the Monday. So we just had to kind of let it happen at home. And then I had to go in and be told. So it happened like through the weekend. I knew when it had happened. And then we had to then go in to the hospital to have the scan and everything. And I mean, that's the horrendous part, I think. Going in and hearing that it's... Because the first time it happened... I couldn't get, a, the hospital told me that they couldn't take me in because it was so early, like it was on the weekend or whatever and they were like, we couldn't do anything. So I actually booked myself a private scan. But when it happened, I wouldn't let Blaine come in with me the first time. Mm -hmm. 
I'm very like, I'm going to do it myself. I'm really bad for it. I'll deal with it myself. So I took myself into a private scan to be told that I'd lost my baby and it was horrific, Mary. So the second time round, I had it in my head, I don't want Blaine hearing that we're losing this baby again. Like, I can't do it. And I remember saying to my mum and Blaine and the two of them shut me down there and then, you're not doing this yourself. Don't be so bloody stupid. Because my mum lost the plot with me the last time I went in myself. But, um, aye, so then that happened and we just had to get on with it. And you've kept yourself busy, which is probably I'm always been like that though. <laughs> I'm massive. always I'm a hundred mile an hour all the time. I know. I mean, she says to me, "How are you going to remember everything to talk about?" It's like, and when you're talking there, I'm like, "I need to remember and talk about this. I need to remember and talk about that." Because you do that I'm much. I'm a hundred mile an hour. So the business, the dancing. I mean, you are actually. So you're a business now, you do social media as your business, which was something I was actually talking about my stories <laughs> this morning. Um, but the dancing, right, so when did you start that? So I've danced all my life. I've taught dance for 10 years. Um, I had MMDC for eight years. And it was just getting to the point, Mary, that there was no the love there anymore. There was no the passion. Um, I was going every day and I was coming home from work crying, like... And I'm like, why am I doing this? And I would come home and blame would be like, why are you coming home every day crying over a, something that you should love so much? Um, so I tried for a year to keep going. Like, I, even through my miscarriage, I still showed up. And it was actually, I'm going to say it because I, I just lost my baby and I went in to work and I was trying to put my face on. And my mum um, had me basically up against a wall screaming at me because our wedding wasn't on social media enough. <sighs> Oh, and I was like, that's my, oh, that's, that that's my, that's my ending point. Yeah. And it was just things like that. And it was just constant. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Hey, because I remember seeing your video as well, where you were, came on social media to say, right. And you were I'm devastated. Done. You were, no, you were was, sobbing. Uh -huh. But you were, you've just, I was that's devastated. It. After eight years, you are wrapping they up your business. Me. They broke me. Absolutely broke me. And we had New York booked and it was even to get to the point where I was like, I can't go to New York. I can't do it. We can't mm -hmm. go. And then we knew for about a month before we went to New York, before I told everyone we knew for about a month that I was packing mm -hmm. it in. Um, and we got, we'd done New York and we went to New York and it was amazing. And they have like this big after party at New York and all my kids were dancing. And I was, I came home for the after party and I was just sobbing to Blaine. And he's like, you don't want to pack this in, do you? And I was like, no, I don't want to pack it in, but I need to for my mental health. Aye, what's your mental I health? I couldn't, I oh, couldn't exactly. keep going. Mm -hmm. That's why I'd, I would never be a teacher. Yeah. Like, I can't, I, I hats so off much. to them. They think, people think, oh, you're a dance teacher, you just turn up at a dance class and you teach a few dance moves. Like, it's not that at all. I had my own dance studio. Mm -hmm. I, I actually had two dance studios. I, I went from a small one to a big one, and there's so much pressure on that in itself. Mm -hmm. um, but I, they ended up just breaking me, Mary. And that was your full-time job, uh -huh. and you chose that's mental all I, health that's all over I've ever the known. job. I did that once. That's, uh -huh. chose my uh -huh. for that's a job. all I've ever known is teach dance. That's uh -huh. all I've known. Uh -huh. um, like, I left school, and I went to do an apprenticeship in a nursery, and I ended up really poorly, and I left, and I opened my dance school, and I never looked back. And that was me. I opened my dance school in a wee hall with 15 kids, and I never looked back. Such a shame. And then, but we still do have a dance school. I saw you at a competition. So, at the uh -huh. so we, um, well, I run the competitions. Oh, do you? <laughs> all right. right oh so, uh, we came home and all my kids were sobbing. The ones that I'm really, really close to, like, there's some parents that I've like, I've grew up with, like, because I started it so young. Do you know what I mean? They've been with me the whole right. journey. Mm -hmm. Or there's ones that's been there from like Amelia's been born, and they're so close to them. Um, so we came home and I was sobbing and I was going through all my boxes of memories from the studio and I'm like, ah, I can't do this. And then we came to the conclusion that we were going to get a wee haul one hour a week and it's just my competition kids. And mm -hmm. it's basically my sister that runs it and it's just, it's our passion project. It's no business to us anymore. Um, we just do it. It's one day a week we get to go to dancing. And it's like, because mm -hmm. it's my sister's life as well. Like, that's what kept me going for so long, my sister. Like, I mm -hmm. couldn't take that away from my sister because it's all she's ever known. Mm -hmm. um, so we still do that, but I, I do run dance competitions. So you do, you are right. I do events, hey. <laughs> my God. How do you squeeze all that in as well? I don't know. But, but at least you're still getting to do... Yeah, I still get my dance in my life. That is that's your passion, know. like right. you say. So what then, when you pack, packed it up? I mean, I, I, can't, I know exactly how you must have felt. Did you have any idea Plan? what you were no. going to do next? I've just been a stay-at-home mum. I was terrified, Mary terrified and I just remember being in the kitchen and I was 
crying and crying to Blaine and Blaine was like, right, let's fix this. So he tried to like, Blaine's very like numbers, I can't do numbers, I can't count or mm-hmm. anything like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so he was trying to do all the finances part of it and I'm like, I'm just crying, I don't want to do this anymore. He's like, right, we'll pack it in then. Just leave, mm-hmm. that's it, just stop doing that. So we done that and we agreed I was going to be a stay-at-home mum and just focus on my social media. And honestly, Blaine is, everybody on social media always says Blaine's my biggest cheerleader because he actually is. He, mm-hmm. I could come in and be like, yeah, I'm opening a new pre-mark around the corner. And he'd be like, go for <laughs> it. I, I believe in you, you can do it. Go for yeah. it. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? That's mm-hmm. just the way he is. Mm-hmm. He's like that as well. Very Never. silently. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> But I on social media it looks like this big doer face <laughs> doll. Yeah, he has that win. as well. He has that as well. But behind the, the scenes, I, like mm-hmm. he encourages everything uh-huh. that I like. Do. See, most of my videos, you best believe Blaine's took the content for it, or Blaine's Aye. been like, "That's brilliant, take a picture of that." <laughs> or he'll Aye. he's even started like if he goes out with Amelia or something, or even the house renovations, he was taking the content and sending it. <laughs> That's mental. He's brilliant. That he does that. That for no, he's good. Aye. He is good. So, I mean. That then, that was kind of, was that the start of you thinking, right? Because you did social media before that, mm-hmm. that's how I know you. Did you, was that, that the point where you went, right, I need to try and do make this a business? Uh-huh. I can do this. Aye. And so how did you do it? I just had to. For anybody that wants to do it, like, it is, how do you do that? Like, I always say to them, just pick your phone up and go for it. Like, just start talking. Just go for it. Uh, like, I always say, like, people always say to me, but Maria, I'm only getting 200 views. But mm-hmm. can you imagine those 200 people standing in front of you talking? I know. No, like, I say that. Uh-huh. I think that People all the always time. say, but I can uh, never get past 200 views or uh-huh. I've only got 3,000 followers. But can you imagine 3,000 people standing in front of uh-huh. me? I would die. That. You need to think, like, no, uh-huh. I totally agree with you. Because I, I would do that or find myself thinking with the podcast, like, Influencers get more views than just, well, it depends what it is, right? It's really mixed. But sometimes I'll look and go, oh my God, that was like only a couple of hundred people that yeah. watched that or whatever, or 500. Why are they views doing so but bad? Then, but, Can you but, imagine them standing in front of you? I know, that. they always think, but that is 500, 500. actual uh-huh. people. Actual That's what people. I always say. Like, you do need to, like, I, now, with Instagram, for example, and you're probably the same with TikTok, I cannot comprehend it. So when people say to me, you don't realise how popular that is, uh-huh. or something that you do, or whatever, I'm, I just go, you're right, I don't, and I don't <laughs> want I, to. I was, I, in my head, like, my social media is a different world. Uh, so see yeah. if I go somewhere and, like, somebody goes, oh, i seen your video on TikTok, I'm like, oh, did you? Oh, my God, no, you never did. You actually, <laughs> Maria, you've just posted it to 35k on TikTok. Uh, Obviously, they've seen it, like... Do you know, uh, but in my head, I've posted it and nobody's seen it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mental. Yeah. But I think that's one of the things that keeps you grounded, mm-hmm. though, as well. Like, mm-hmm. you're just, you, it's better not to comprehend yeah, it. Yeah, just post not it and leave it. it. <laughs> don't look at the just numbers. Like, I, I mean, people say to me, like, I, I don't know why this is either, because obviously Instagram's my platform, but when people say to me, I saw that on uh, TikTok, I'm like, what? <laughs> TikTok? <laughs> I don't do TikTok, but that's changing. I'm going no, to do TikTok. I'm doing you it before this TikTok. 2023 is out. I'm going to start sharing my chit chat on TikTok. <laughs> Absolutely. You need um, to. So I were digressing massively. Hey, what were we saying when we were talking about your um, dance business? No, then you, we moved on to the social media. That's what we were talking about. So what... But did you have a plan in mm-hmm. your mind what you were going to go for, what you were going mm-hmm. to do? No, Absolutely. right. So you just started talking. And I just people tell love everyone, that. you need to stay consistent. I love... And what you mean by that is posting Show up. every day. So it's even when that week of my life was absolute carnage, like, I don't even remember what happened last week, I still made sure to show up on my social media. Once a day, uh-huh. or even more than more that? More than that, if I can. Like, mm-hmm. I need to show up my social media, and it's paid off. Like, I've hit that 10k. I had uh-huh. uh, 5,000 followers last week on uh-huh. Instagram, uh-huh. right? It's so you enough. need to keep showing up. That's what I always tell the girls that I help with their social media. You need to keep showing up, uh-huh. no matter you what. Do. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. do. And, it, and not focus on the numbers mm-hmm. at all. I actually, oh, people Just... always say to me, oh, but I, I've not got the confidence to do it, or I'm so embarrassed, or I wish I had your confidence. That's why I, I am not a confident person at all. I am riddled with anxiety, mm-hmm. 24-7. Mm-hmm. I just fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you just get it on your I have, I am, I'm not confident. It's just whatsoever. a different thing. I just think it's, just it's not about confidence on social media. It's just I just post it and then pretend it didn't happen. Putting it eye, <laughs> just putting it out there eye and then just going well, right, well, about that. That'll anymore. be gone in 24 hours it's on that story. Aye, aye. Exactly. Whereas in the TikTok, it's not gone in 24 yeah, no. hours. It is and I there. forget sometimes. Right, so how did it then turn into a business though? So you're posting your videos, you're just talking whatever. How did it then? Take when you, on TikTok, when you hit ten k, I think it is, you mm. can go into the Creative Beta Fund. I think that's what it's called, and you make good money on it. Like, what does that mean? Not explain it. Make good money. How? How? Yes. What did TikTok do? What did they pay you for? Because I always think, right? I don't really understand how TikTok works, and I always think if you're promoting products for say pretty little thing which i could never do because i'm an old woman why but i think that's what they're getting that's what people get paid for no that, i don't get paid TikTok for tiktok itself is an actual yeah so job. you can actually get so it was called the creator fund before that and you got pennies so i think the whole time i was on it i maybe made about 50 pounds right and now the new thing is it's you get paid per view so you get paid really See, good I didn't, interview. It's going to sound like I'm now going on TikTok for this. I did not know that. But a lot part of, of my growth know. and you know, getting out of my don't. comfort zone for 2024 is to go on a TikTok and chat shite. Yep. Because that's what I do in my stories uh -huh. anyway. I just so see the stuff the you same. post on your stories, you just post it on your TikTok? No, nah, I don't think it would get the same views. So I will. think you need to be genuine. No, but do you know how you need to just come on TikTok, press the button the same way you do with the yeah. stories and talk? I, so would they, I would need then you need to, your to save place. my stories <laughs> and then post, post it. it. I just don't think it would do the same. But I don't really want to do that anyway. And I feel a wee bit bad about this because I feel so loyal to my Instagram, Instagram. people. So I'll need to, I'm doubling my work because I'll need to still do the same as mm -hmm. what I've been doing mm -hmm. on the TikTok. Yeah. Right, so what do you get? It's views. It just depends. Like, it changes all the time. Sometimes you can make, like, I think it's like, you can get like 60 pence per view or like, it does massively fluctuate all the time. Um, so when you hit 10,000, I can made apply more and I made more last month on TikTok than I would have done with MMDC in one month. And that is just... Views. Pure people viewing your um, content mm -hmm. and you're getting paid for that. Nothing else. You don't do any... So then there's TikTok shop where you can like promote things and that does... You get really good commission on TikTok shop. But again, I'm really... I don't like promoting things that I don't... Do you know what I mean? That like, don't sit Aye. right with me. Like I'm not mm -hmm. just promote something for the sake of it. But yeah, you do make good money on TikTok shop commissions. I feel like people don't talk about that. No, they don't. Why they is there don't. such a big so stigma about it? Because... I, I, quite I, mean, I did not know. I did not know that TikTok Absolutely. were paying you just for views and whatever. There's a thing on Instagram. So I recently had a stupid reel go viral, and I got this thing put them up saying, "Do you want to monetize this?" Right. But to me, like, so I looked at it and I was like, "Well, what's this?" Clicked on it. And it was like where people can send you money. And I was like, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm not having that. I am not having that. Like that, I have, I do have morals like aye. that. I do feel quite aye, morally aye. strong about that. I just don't want people sending me money. They are just hard to money for, for the fuck all for the sake of it. But if ti it's the Instagram, TikTok but, so I thought, is this Instagram paying me Maybe. for views? But it wasn't. Oh, right, All I okay. could see was that it was to set up your account so that people, nah. if they so wish, could send you money. And I don't like that. Yeah. But whereas if TikTok... For it's your, like your boss paying see, you TikTok, paying you, do you know what I mean? Aye, it's like that's your boss what I was going to say. Your so if, you're, if TikTok or Instagram then decide, right, you're a creator, you actually help us with our platform because mm -hmm. people want to watch your content. Mm -hmm. So you're contributing to the platform. We are going to give you a wee yep. cut of what we make mm -hmm. in advertising or whatever it is, you know, Absolutely. however they make money. But I'm all right with that. Yeah. Like, that's, that's like, just like you're just getting, paying your, your wage. You're, ah, you're getting paid for yeah. creating your content. Because people don't, don't realise the time and effort goes into being a content creator. Like, mm. I think a lot of people think we stick our phone up, we film a video. There's so much more. It's so draining. It's yeah, so know. exhausting, isn't it? Like, Aye. it can burn you right out sometimes. And people think that you, oh, they get paid just to post a video. We do get paid just to post a video, but there's so much more behind the scenes mm -hmm. that you don't know about. Mm -hmm. And do you learn more about algorithms and things mm -hmm. like that I when you're doing algorithms. that? Do they help you? Like, see, I know. No, I just I love social media. That kind of stuff. I'll help you. 
How do you know about Avocado? I don't know, I just know a lot about social media. People always, I help a lot of girls do their social media. I know, you've already referred to that when we've been chatting. I'll help you. I'll help you. Right. Um, I love it all, I could talk about it How do you know about it? You just learned it just as learned, you went along. Aye, so it's you... nothing that anybody's told you. you no, just no, I've just, uh, I've just learned about it. Right. I'm so, just one of them people. <laughs> right. So that's that's how you make your biz. That's how you make your money now. Right? You're quite open about But I that. love that because I'm now a stay-at-home mum. Like, I can be with Amelia. Do you know what I mean? We're actually now with your mum. Uh, is she yeah, nursery, she's a, though? Uh, she's starting nursery in January. Uh, I put her into private nursery and I took her out. Oh, I did. That was... I just couldn't. You're I had mum girl. You're breaking it in. I had mum girl. Oh, I wish I was breaking it in. <laughs> <laughs> you will be. No belong. No belong. Hen. So you don't do any of the paid adverts. That's mm. just that. Not you're really, getting no. your content paid mm -hmm. for. Right. So what was I going to ask you there? Back to where I was in the story. That was your business. Right. So you're just going to continue doing that. Then you moved. You you bought this house. Your first ever Bought, bought house with Blaine and it was or bought house full mm -hmm. stop bought house never thought I'd be buying a house this year um, never I know it just happened accidentally why did you never think you would I do just, that I just had it in my brain that I was never going to be able to buy a house I don't know just never thought and how did it happen then so we did only four weeks and uh -huh. I'm pure no, nosy about that I'm like how weeks. was it only four weeks how did that so happen so we we agreed we were going to buy a house like three months ago maybe and we were looking and we put a few offers in two houses i think and they just kept getting knocked back like crazy money above us right. and i'm like how is anyone supposed to compete with us so at that point i was like i'm done two houses and i'm like i'm done i'm not doing it anymore <laughs> and then we we knew somebody that was selling their mum's and dad's house uh -huh. and it's in the same street as my mum oh, wow. so we went to view it and it was a, obviously an old person's house but the old people that owned it it was they've only ever owned it it was a family home mm -hmm. and it like the, the woman that sold it to us we love her to pieces it was her childhood home and it's only mm -hmm. had one owner mm -hmm. um but obviously it was an open house so we needed to strip it right back but we had four weeks to do it why only four weeks because mm -hmm. it meant that we didn't need to pay a mortgage and rent for two months only right. one month right right okay. and we had to give four weeks notice to our rented so i take it the solicitor was able to complete the it whole got done in, in about four weeks. Uh -huh. so it can be done in it four got weeks done but i just so wondered quick. what the reason so i think it was like, it took maybe three four weeks to all go through and then we put our notice in and then we had four weeks to renovate so it, it was mental. So fast. Like when you were because we were actually meant to do this a couple of weeks just ago. Just before we, I bought the house, was it not? No, or was just it after? You know, in the middle there. Maybe, maybe I think. I can't so. mind, but anyway, we put it off, anyway. and I thought, no, I, I don't want you coming <laughs> and crying. Your tits. I, about this four weeks, no, we'll, we'll wait till you've done that. So actually, you've moved in on yep. Friday, or was yeah, it Saturday? Friday, Friday. Friday. Um, and it's the most stressful four weeks of my life. But you did an amazing again. job. No, you and your mum and Blaine. I and your sister take... was there as well. You my just sister all... was just there for the beautiful face and look after <laughs> my, my Wayne. But no, Amelia was amazing. Bethany was amazing with Amelia. Um, she Bethany's would, your uh, sister. Bethany's my sister. Baby. Aye. And she would come round and just take Beth at Amelia and go and give her her dinner and bath her and put her to bed. Bethany was amazing that way. And I can't take any credit for that house. I was there to take the content. <laughs> Like, they would laugh because right. I would turn up, take some content, and then leave with Amelia. It I was, was a, It was morning, it was mom, noon, mom, and night. My mum, and... 100%. Oh, my God. Mum's 56, and she was there morning to, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, like, straight through. Um, and she done. we didn't get one person in to do anything in the house other than take the boiler out. My mum done everything. The, Why did you need the boiler out? Was it, it that It was like old? one of the old um, fireplaces with an old aye, boiler. So aye. we had to get a new boiler in. And it was either a case of get it done just now whilst we were doing it. Or they would have to rip all our floorboards up after Christmas and get it done. So we just got it aye. done. Mm -hmm. um, but everything my mum done, everything, the the walls, the, the flooring. But she taught Blaine everything as well. So, so he can do it next yeah. time. That's what mum's mum's like, that's me, I'm done. <laughs> Oh, good. And you like that? Oh, you like, like it? Like, I, I wasn't sinking in that we owned a house that whole time. I was mm. just like, oh, we're just decorating another house. Like, um, And then the other morning I woke up and I'm like, shit, I own a house. <laughs> this is my house. That's you on the property. Uh -huh. like, yeah. And the, the content, though, the Instagram. I did not expect so, that to blow so up. So you're both your TikTok and your Instagram and Amy, the social mama, uh -huh. shared your page and yeah. I'm like, oh, hold on, you know, I I've, known, I've known Maria for years. I was here this first. Is me. I, um, excuse me, and I 
I messaged her and I said, Maria's coming on, getting up. And she was like, no way. Said hi. And I wanted to say, and I've known it. I'll see you, Amy, this weekend anyway. So I'll be telling her. I've known Maria for ages. Uh, so your t- was it your TikTok and your Instagram that blew so up? So I was actually doing it on TikTok. And then I was just going on to my stories to ask people advice. Like, what do you think of this? Because I'm not like, my mum can walk into like a... The dingiest house in the world, right? And she'd be like, that'll look amazing like that. It's like she has yeah, the vision. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we're living in a crackdown for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I've not got that in my head. Right. So I just kept going to TikTok, Instagram and being like, what do you think we should do with this? Do you think we should do that? And everyone just loved it. Like, see my request, oh, Mary. See. I can't get through my requests. <laughs> see, I know sometimes you do just need to draw the line. Uh-huh. I know, and like, I feel people so get bad. annoyed I and like so rude and all the rest of it, but, oh but you do God. need to draw the line. If that's one piece of advice I can give you, you know, you need to have your life as well. But do you know what I loved? And you, you'll remember it. Oh, no. no, we called it a pulley. I've still got it. I I've know. got my washing on it. I I didn't know you still had it because I didn't see any follow-ups. Sorry, but I saw the rope for it in one of your videos, and I'm like, she's kept it. She's kept the pulley. So my gran, my mum, and my auntie Marion all had a pulley in the kitchen. That was coming out as soon as I was in there. Do you know? I am glad that you kept it because. It did bring back loads of memories for me, but what really stuck in my mind was because obviously my gran used to fry chips and I right, so that it. was why I wasn't keeping it right. <laughs> everyone was people were doing it. Was were such, it and was a split decision. Like everyone was right. like, either everyone was like, "Oh my god, please keep that. If you're not, sell me because I, like people are getting them put back in now, right? Oh, I think. Uh huh. And then the other part were like, "Yeah, but your clothes will stink." And I'm at explain. Oh, we can't keep that. Like our clothes will stink. And Blaine was like, "Maria, you don't cook." <laughs> but I can't does he cook. not cook? Does I know Blaine cook? can cook. But back but in the day, we're not going to do it every day. Ah. I was having chips every day. We're we'll doing it at night time, like after right. dinner and stuff. So last night, Blaine's in chilling in the living room, and he comes through, and I've got my pulley down. Do you call that a pulley? Uh-huh. As I, was cold, I, I, I was love it now. It was coming down. As soon as I moved in, I was like, that's coming down. So did you do it? Did you renovate my it? My mum's going to paint it. it. She just ran out of time, but she's going to paint it white. But I was wondering if it maybe didn't need painted anyway. It doesn't it's actually. It's actually all right. Oh, it's absolutely fine. But my mum's a pure perfectionist. And because she says she was painting it, it's going to get painted. Right. And <laughs> but I do you, love it. You just decided that you were going to keep it because you don't cook. My mum said, my mum was like, um, I'm so glad you said you were keeping it. Because I, she thinks as well that she was aye. like, I used to have one of them. Aye, it's just aye, aye. so, so. And the owner, the own, so the house too is, she messaged me the other day she's like I'm so glad you kept that pulley we did keep wee things in it that was like and do you know you're saying they're coming back I didn't know that but Mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me they're coming back because I feel like with a lot of things we are going back the way Mm -hmm. and man older than you right so I remember back in the day where the heating wasn't allowed to go on and the big (laughs) light wasn't allowed to go on because of the cost of energy Mm -hmm. and the pulley was one of the things that you know if you had to I mean in the winter there was no other way to dry your clothes back Mm -hmm. in the day and that was where the clothes went on Mm -hmm. the pulley Mm -hmm. so uh, it's going back the way because we're not a few girls messaged me and they're like you're joking I've just paid 200 pounds to get one of them put in you're joking there must be people doing it there were people saying to me please will you sell if you're getting rid of that can you sell me and I was like oh is everybody wanting this I'm going to keep it then (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was why you kept it. I'm glad that you did. No, I was um, And I'm so glad that you're... Uh, so tell me about your socials. We're just talking about that. So TikTok went for what? What was TikTok um, So before all the renovations, I think I was at 20k. And you're now at 35. So, because mm-hmm. I remember Blaine... Like, me and Blaine always ask me things like, so what's your goal? What's your goal? <laughs> and it, Blaine, bless his heart, checks my social media all the time. And he was the one that's like, you're about to hit 10k, you're about oh, to hit wow. 10k. He's, he's so mm. cute that way. But and that was Instagram. That was Instagram. So I had I had 5k on Instagram, like, before all the renovations. So I know Amy shared you. Were, were there other people that shared you? Or was it, did you have a reel that went no. mental? It was no, just, just TikTok. Reels. It was from TikTok. Oh, people were coming Coming over. from TikTok. Aye. Because I was it's saying on my TikTok, well. go to my Instagram and you'll see, like, what we were doing more behind the scenes. Because it was, like, on TikTok, it was more like vlogs we were doing about the day. And then on Instagram was more like as we were going, doing it and me asking for advice and stuff. And obviously everybody wants to put their wee bit in, don't they? Like, yeah, yeah. And it was so nice, like the love and support we got and some of the ideas that we've now done is because I've put it on my social media. I do think that there's something, there's just something so special about, especially your journey and everything you've been through and a new couple buying their first wee mm. pad together 
and the way that it was, as you say, it was it was needing rip to yeah. it, and just I don't know, there's just it's got the X factor. <laughs> that's what it's got. All that content is that's the only way to describe it. You can't even put your finger on it. Like, <laughs> Why? Say, How, did you? How did you do that? And you're like, uh, my mom. It's called the X factor. Nobody knows it. <laughs> Nobody knows it what it is. It's just X factor um <laughs> I, i'm stealing the x factors idea that, I know, um, but aye that was how you aye that was great and that'll that'll contribute like, see if you'd said to me and blaine this time last year yous will be back together and buying a house we would have laughed in your face and like shut up that was so stupid did you think you would get back Phil? i always kind of knew i it wasn't uh, it wasn't a nice it wasn't very nice like what we went through and stuff when we were broke up and then um, did you hate each other really absolutely no, we hated each other. <laughs> really hated God. each other. And you got over that. Do you get any relationship advice? Because I bet you there would be people like, how Just did admit you you're do wrong. That? Just did admit. Did you do that? If now I can put my hands up and say, absolutely, I definitely done and said things I shouldn't have done. You done and said things I shouldn't have done. It's just holding up, taking accountability and moving on from it. Like, I think we could easily hold a grudge over each other and be like, but you done this, you done that. Like, you've, we've put each other through this. But it's how we're now moving on from it. Like we don't, mm-hmm. we call it our old story. We don't talk. We don't talk about things we used to do and say. Like we are. When I say we are totally different people, we are totally different people. The way we communicate, like we'll we'll talk about things now, whereas we just used to sweep things under the carpet. We'll absolutely sit down and we'll speak about things, and we just don't bring up what how we used to do things. Totally mm-hmm. different. We don't. We always. I think we always say to each other, we don't ever want Amelia grown up and thinking that's how. That's Families. how she should, should be treated because mm-hmm. it's absolutely not the way we treated each other. We weren't, in, we weren't, in, me and Blaine weren't horrible to each other, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So we just, um, it's moving on from it. Like we don't like to dwell on the past. Right. What's the point in no, that? We always say you could die tomorrow. No, it's, and would you be I, happy with your life or how you've I, treated each other? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a good attitude to have. And it's, that was it's, therapy that done that to me. <laughs> well, therapy's obviously helped with your oh, relationship absolutely. as well. I even made Blaine go to therapy for a wee while. And did he like it? Did he at first he was like, I'm not going, I'm not going to speak to That's the way I used to say. See, the first thing I said when I walked into therapy, I said to Kevin, my therapist, I'm not going to tell you nothing, I'm not going to speak to you. <laughs> After that one hour, I'm like, what did you just do? I mean, how did you just get me to speak about things that I have never spoke to people about? Like, not even to my mum and my sister that I spoke to my therapist about. And he was like, oh, I thought you weren't going to speak to me. So Blaine kind of had that same attitude and even he says he was the easiest guy to ever speak to and he feels mm-hmm. so much better for it. Mm-hmm. He only did it for a few. I mean, that's great that, he, that he's done that and it's great that you did it. And it's one of those things, if you ever need it again, you're saying you need it again, I'm joking. But seriously, if I you do ever need it again, it. Uh, you've got, oh, me too. Oh. Ollie, I love all type of go therapy. Go uh-huh, absolutely. Whatever. I even say it to my mum, I'm like, you need to go to therapy. And she's like, no, shut up. I'm like, you need, everybody needs to be a bit of therapy in their life. Like, just to mm-hmm. talk to somebody mm-hmm. that's not... I agree, I love it. Mm-hmm. Edna at all like that. I mean, I know you need to pay for it most of the time. Unless see you the get Clydesdale Council one. I done the charity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was pay what you could afford at the time or just put your wee donation in, which I thought was brilliant. Um, I absolutely love Kevin at Clydesdale Council. He changed my life. Mm-hmm. 100%. If you can, if you can find somebody that does that, mm-hmm. it is, and you need it, it is mm-hmm. incredible. Definitely. I totally agree. Right, so we've got fifteen minutes left. I want to ask you about your boobs. Okay. Because you're friends. <laughs> I didn't realise you were friends with my pal Jill Beard. Oh, I love um, Jill. Aye, Jill does a lot of social media as well, so it kind of. Mm. Although, did you not meet? Did you not get to know her through the Glasgow Girls Club? Because no. Jill comments, no. So it was on TikTok. No, it no. was. Ju- I just went for my breast reduction. Oh, uh-huh. I'm saying, aye, you I didn't know there. before that. Aye, aye. Right. Um, so Jill owns Cosmetic yeah. Care, and you went to Cosmetic Care. So how did you find Cosmetic Care? I done so much research before getting my boobs done. I always wanted my boobs done, and Mary, I need to show you pictures, right? I swear to God people laugh like my boobs were massive like done to hear you massive fortune oh, fans, no <laughs> man see now me and like all my dancers always laugh like how did i not walk like falling forward or, it can have it was horrendous i never done no, that right. but now i've got a bad back i'm like i wonder if that was all the years of having the big boobs <laughs> so i after i had amelia right i wanted my breast reduction done for years and years my auntie got one done and she swore by it but i'm like terrified of hospitals terrified of needles like i'm the biggest one ever right and me and blaine had broke up and i'm like that's it i'm gonna get my boobs done <laughs> boobs for me <laughs> so but i remember saying to myself see if you can go through what you went through having amelia like having the C-section and all that, you can go get your boobs done. And I was so anxious about it, but I'd done it and it's the best thing I've ever done for right, myself. Right, so how did you find Cosmetic here? I just researched mad amounts. I was like, I just, 
I was so cautious of going like and getting it done and get not enjoy not liking it or something. So I ended up just coming across because Medicare and researching the surgeons like a madman, um, and then just like stalking them. And then did you connect with Jill? Because uh, even though she's just not a surgeon, them. she's so she's so, so knowledgeable. Good. She's so on the ball. So I just I emailed them, done all that. I didn't meet Jill until. I don't even think I met her at my like consultation. Maybe I did. I just remember going in to because Medicare and I was I was chattering right uh -huh. more anxious Where than when I first go? met you. Livingston. Livingston. Uh -huh. No, no, it wasn't Livingston. Where's the other one? Glasgow. No, uh, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah, it was Edinburgh. when she just Aye. had that one. Aye. So I went and I was chattering going in, and I remember the girls just made me feel so chill. Like, there was two girls, and they just made me feel so chilled out, right? And then I went in and I got it done, and I remember coming out and being like. I'm going to document this journey, and I did, and that's the first thing that blew and you up. And you, really? Mm -hmm. That's that? the first thing well, that blew I didn't up. Know that. I, no, this was like two years ago. I got it done on my birthday. I got it done on my twenty sixth birthday. How I was did in theatre. I don't know how I, I don't missed know. that. Um, I don't know. And then, so that blew up at first, and then um, I kind of met Jill in between all of that, and we were just chatting like about social media and stuff, like all that kind of thing. And then Jill just ended up being like. I always just say, like, Jill's like a, a mo to me. Like, I always just mm -hmm. go to her if I'm, like, worried about something, I'll speak to her. Mm -hmm. And then it was Bethany's birthday and I bought a dog from Jill, um, or Tucker. Oh, I don't She know. had a dog, but she was really allergic to oh. him. Oh, oh I saw really that. I saw she him. put that on Facebook, uh, actually. She was That's right. so we Aye. took Tucker. Um, and I, I, Jill's just... I was just there so making, the time. Right, so the boob job, the whole thing oh, then, getting a boob reduction, what's the what's involved with that? Um, I don't know. Do, do, <laughs> do they, like, how do you know what size so, to go for? I did they cut I did, off and I, move your nipple? Uh -huh, like, uh, oh, I, God. So I just told them just take me as small as you possibly can because it obviously depends on, like, your frame, I, I don't body, know. I whatever. just say do whatever you want. Just get rid of these big... How many sizes did you go down I then? still don't know. I don't I don't wear a bra. Do you not? No. You don't wear a bra Never. at all. And if I do it's you a, know I'm looking at no. your boobs, you don't look like you don't wear and, a bra. And if I do it's a sports bra. I hate wearing a bra. So you don't know what size you are mm -hmm. what you wear. But there's a big difference. Oh I like my boobs my boobs are at my belly button. Right. Do you have you show, showed before and after no. on your <laughs> No That's one That's thing I've got done. That is for that is the only <laughs> thing. <laughs> I bet you could make a fork. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. I and do you feel them. a lot better? Oh, yeah. It's the best thing I've ever done for myself while I'm in therapy. Right. And you always just hated your boobs. That's why you did them. it. Being a dancer with big boobs just wasn't a thing. You could, like, I remember being in dance college and, like, getting called fat. I was a size 10. My God. And my, my lecturer told me. And it would just be because uh -huh, you had My lecturer put me on a diet plan. Oh, my God. No, dance college is another. Appalling. Dance college is another a, home. Oh my god! Um, Aye. But they, I was a size ten, and I got put on a diet plan and told I was overweight because my boobs made me look so much bigger. And um, can he change you that? Can I know? But as what it is in the dance world, dance world is horrendous. Mhm. Mm just no, I mm -hmm. tell everybody. I always talk. People always still to this day ask me about my my boobs. But it was only a couple of years ago. I it's know, still right. quite decent. Mhm. Mm do people ask for advice on it? Yeah, yeah. Um, they always like, and I always recommend because Medicare always. I just think in general, like they're just so like like you say, Jill just knows. Mm -hmm. Like, see, even if there was something wrong with me, I would just text Jill and she's like, "Yeah, it's this, this, this." I'm like, "How do you know mm -hmm. that? Because you're not even a surgeon, mm -hmm. but she's mm -hmm. so knowledgeable." She's so knowledgeable. She just right, knows so everything about her business. But, but really, that's how it should, it should be. be. Exactly. Like, you should know everything. But I think that was why, I... like, I just felt like they just knew what they were talking about all the time. Mm -hmm. She just, she was just so. So easy to talk to as well. Right, she is. She's amazing. She I've had loads of people in my car that have been to jail. Loads. Aye. Aye. Loads. Well, obviously, um, Charlie, Zag, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. trans mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. Most of them have been to jail. Mm -hmm. um, well, no jail. But like we say, <laughs> I know, we she doesn't like actually jail, do the, the operations. But you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, I think that is, have I remembered everything? Is that so. everything we were going to talk about? So. And we've, we've covered it in under an hour, which is even better. Um, I, I, can't, I know we did, I, I can't think of anything else. That's everything that's on your social media that you share and a wee bit more, mm. really. Um, so, 
all there is left to say is thanks very much. I mean, that's I'm so glad that, that you did it. You were so oh, anxious. I was so anxious, Mary. I wasn't coming. I know. I know. I, I did think you were going to patch me. I did think I was getting stood up the day. No, because no, because there's any no, just beef in it. I'm just because I, you've been stressed out your box. But no, you've done it. I've done it. And that's you. And Maria, will, this will be out next week. I'm so excited. it's going to be quite quick I've got a week well. to be anxious so I, about that. Oh, fuck's sake, man. Right, we're away. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. See you later. Bye. Bye.